gamers, we're back with the last guide for the new sieves. I got six videos, everything you need to know about each sieve, and I got five build orders, and this is a sixth one for how to play the one TC fast aggression with every single civilization. That's what I'm talking about. Now, let's get started. We're gonna be doing the Japanese uh, guide today, and it's with a unit that might surprise you. It's with a unit that I thought sucks. But in fact, it's actually with the two units I thought suck. One was the Samurai and the other one, well, stay tuned to find out. So, uh, I've been, I've been trying, I've probably spent the most time out of any Civ on Japanese trying to figure out a build order. And I found one that I liked. And I won, I think like six out of seven games playing against top rated players with the Japanese with this build. It's crazy, it's wild, and it works. So, would it be shinobis? No, they still suck, unless on hybrid maps. You're gonna start the game by putting five villagers on food and taking one and placing a farmhouse, which is their house plus mill, on the berries, and you're immediately going to get the Japanese wheelbarrow. What this will do is it will increase the carry capacity, movement speed, and 25% gather rate from uh, berry bushes. So what you want to do is you're gonna have seven villagers of food, one building this. The moment this finishes, you're going to swap the villagers onto the berries. Right there, you get movement speed, and now you have a higher gather rate from the berry bushes. And then eighth, ninth, tenth, and uh, 11 villager will be going on gold. So now you're a bit behind on gold, so that's why we're gonna put four. And the idea behind going for berries is you want to get the berries uh, preferably gathered completely by the time the enemy comes so that you don't have uh, you know, a, a vulnerable spot to get harassed and then you're gonna go under the TC with your sheep. So with the scout, we're obviously gonna scout around, see what's on the map, get him them, get the sheep and so on. And um, I'm gonna kinda explain a little bit how to play this early uh, game with Japanese, how to wall, where to put stuff, you will see. I'm going to show you two games where I actually played this build in like real games against real players, and you will see how the fights went. Now, I was still trying to find the optimal build there, so the build won't be exactly in those games as it is in this one, but you'll just see how the build works, or how the army interactions work. So, uh, I'm gonna rally after four on gold, I'm gonna just rally onto the sheep until we can uh, age up. And what we're going to do is we're gonna take three from the berries to age up. Now, where do you put your Kura storehouse? So, the way the Kura storehouse works, if this is the Kura storehouse, it places farms for free around it. But it will always start from the left corner of the of the of the, the landmark. And it's gonna go here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, then here, and all the way until the very first one. And it's going to play place 12 farms total. So if your opponent is, let's say, the sacred side right here, you never want to put Kura Storehouse here because then the first farm would be all the way there, which would not be protected. So you always want to make sure that Kura Storehouse is positioned in a way where your farms are safe. Sometimes you'll have some weird spawns. For example, uh, you, you, you'll you have a spawn where, um, let's say your opponent is on this side, right? On the bottom side. And you can either position Kura Storehouse here, or you can position it, let's say, here or here. Now, another thing you can do is what I've seen uh, some players do is, let's say I want to position my core storehouse here and the opponent is attacked from that side. What you can do is you can put a house where the initial farm would go. So the first farm would not go there, but it would be here. It would be closer to the town center. And once you have the map control, you can delete the house and then the last farm is going to spawn at the end there. That's like, you know, optimizing it a little bit too much, but just giving you guys an option. So. Kura storehouse, here we go. I'm gonna take these three, I'm gonna build it right here. This is like the best spot you can build it at uh, because the first farms are gonna be next to TC. Then the farms would go around here, which is well protected by the wood line. And I'm gonna place this a wall here. So this is like almost as, as you know, good of a Kura storehouse as it can be. Yeah, so it's also, uh, um, 
It's also a universal drop-off location, so that's something that you can use. So for example, if my opponent was on that side, because if my opponent is north, if I put it here, then the farms are gonna kind of be forward-ish. But if my opponent was on, on this side of the map, putting Kura storehouse right here and, and skipping the lumber mill and just going, you know, I would get a farm here, 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 and then the farms will continue on this side. That's all right too, but it, it is a universal drop off. So you can drop off stone and um, gold on it. But obviously if you place it next to stone, you're gonna not have a, a two farms until the, that stone is completely out. So have that in mind, I would suggest the only place you want to actually connect it to, as far as other resource to use as a drop off point, is probably your first wood line. Otherwise, you're going to block your farms for too long. All right. So, we're going to leave four on berries. We're going to take three from the berries to build a landmark. And then we're going to take four from the gold and we're going to put them on the stone. Why do we do that? The reason we do that is because. Uh, I want to get 300 stone to upgrade my town center because that is going to be one less uh, uh, spot I will need to defend later on. And you will want to get the TC upgraded anyway to Daimyo Manor because we will need a Bannerman later on. So I found that it's uh, the easiest way to set up. It's tiny bit, not necessarily super greedy, but it's tiny bit like maybe early but I like that you can upgrade your TC um, and already boost your farms and just have a little bit stronger TC. Now, so we had um, here seven, three go on the landmark from the gold, four on go on the stone, and then you will have the rest of the villagers that were on food. You're going to put them on wood and you will rally onto the wood now until you have eight villagers there. You're gonna need eight villagers on wood. And after that, uh, we will change the rally point. So right now I have basically the way it works out is by the time the villagers from gold arrive to stone, you will have 50 wood to drop the forge uh, so that you can gather that. And again, the idea is that you gather the necessary stone until by the time your opponent comes to your base to harass you. And then if there's a knight or something, you can pull away from the bears too. So you're chilling under town center. Now, um, this build starts off a bit defensive while harassing. So you, you know, if the enemy attacks with horsemen or, or knights, I would say knights are probably the biggest threat. So if the enemy comes with knights, uh, that's the biggest threat because it arrives really fast. But other sieves, you should be the one that's dictating the tempo and putting in the aggression. If you're playing against a knight sieve, I would suggest you to open with at least 10 spears so that you have enough to, or like, six to ten spears so you can defend against knights and then later on we will transition into different units if you're playing against a horseman sieve you do not need to make spearmen we will make on us which you will see a little bit later so i'm getting my lumber camp i got almost eight on wood and now we're done with the wood for very 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 long time so some of the stuff you can do is um, if you're playing against the Night Civ, I'll show you. I make a little wall here, which prevents to isolate this area completely. So the enemy has to go either here, while I'll see them with TC, or all the way around. So if there's some potential small walls you can do like this, or even smaller, go for it if it's going to make you feel safer. But I would not wall this because that is too big, especially not this because that's going to cost me like 130, 140 wood. We're going to do that a bit later. So. The moment Kurostora finishes, you're going to put two back on berries and you're going to put one of the villagers on farms. Now, I have seen some players ignore the farms until later on. The reason why I go on farms immediately is because with the build that I'm showing you guys, the idea is for you to not need to move out of the base for food. Instead, stay on the food for as, oh, uh, you know under your TC and not have to move out at all if possible. So I like to go on farms immediately. And because I'm getting Daimyo Manor upgraded super quickly, uh, I'm going to have 25% increased harvest rate almost immediately. Uh, once I start farming, you can see I'm almost at 300 stone. Um, so what are the upgrades I wanna get? Uh, I will start getting them in a little bit. Uh, with the first 150 wood that I get once I have my lumber mill, I will add a barracks. Do not add 
uh, barracks or production right next to your TC because you want to put farms around your TC eventually because of the daimyo manor that buffs your farm production or gathering rate. Now, after I get 300 stone, I insta upgrade daimyo manor. And now what you want to do is you want to have uh, five or six villagers on gold. And a bit later, I will add two more for a total of eight. Now, what do I want to do with this gold? Well, first I'm gonna start upgrading and I'm gonna start building some units. Now I'm gonna play this game as if I did not play against the Night Civ. If I did play against the Night Civ, like I said, I would open with Spearman. So we got a wall here coming. If I played with a, uh, against the Night Civ, I would make a tower here, or maybe even against a, a horseman heavy harassment Civ, I would make a little tower. And what I love about Japanese is because 20% of the gold you drop off you get stone you will actually be able to upgrade that tower without further mining the gold with the stone which is really nice so if it's going to make you feel safer make a tower as well but if you can be aggressive as early as possible that's going to be very very good and the first thing i want to get is more eco upgrades so daimyo manor is coming one thing to note daimyo manor will give you a free villager so i wanted to show you this so look at this i have a villager queued up when Daimyo Manor finishes, the villager that you're getting instant is queued after your original queue. So for that villager to pop out, this villager would need to fully build. So what I like to do is I like to just cancel this one. Okay, so look at this. And the villager pops instantly and then I queue up. So that's one thing you need to know. When Daimyo Manor finishes, the villager that's instant will be behind all the queued villagers. Uh, I, I do agree it should be priority and it should spawn first, but that's how it is. Now, be careful because you can cancel the instant villager and I have done that many, many times. Every time a farm spawns, by the way, make sure to put one of the villagers from sheep onto that and keep the guys on the berries until the enemy either comes or until the berries are completely gone and then put them on sheep. Now we're gonna make Ona Bugeishas. Now, initially, this unit I thought sucks ass. Uh, the description reads, weak against armored units, countered by archers and knights. And I was like, okay, so what am I supposed to make it against? Spearmen? You know, that's it. But if you look, this unit has a movement speed of 150 or 1 1.5. So if you look, they are really, really, really fast. They're catching up to, to archers, they're catching up to spearmen. They are really, really fast. They only have 85 health, which is really low. They have 0, zero armor, but they're really, really fast. They have a bit of a range on them. They have one range. So to put it in perspective, I think horsemen have 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 range. So they have one range. So if there's a unit in front of them, they can actually attack over the unit, kind of like Abbasid Spears. I think they have more range than Abbasid Spears, but they're a melee unit. <laughs> And they do six damage, which is pretty sad, right? But their attack speed is 0 0.9, which means they attack once every 0 0.9 seconds. So their DPS is incredibly, incredibly high. So if you're playing against the Knights of, you're gonna make Spearman and chill at home for now and keep doing the build order and the upgrades. If you're playing against the Civ that you can harass, immediately rally them across the map and attack the stone, gold, berries, whatever you can do not get them close to town centers but attack anything you can they only cost 60 food and 20 gold and they take 15 seconds to produce so they produce really really quickly every 150 wood that i have right now i am going to add a barracks until i have five barracks total okay i want five barracks four is fine too i i prefer five and every time you need a house i forgot to mention this every time you need a house so this is my first house Place the second and third house around your berries so that the drop-off point is right there. Don't build your houses next to your TC, just build them around berries, initial berries to help you um, boost your eco a little bit. So now we got six on gold. <clears throat> we're gonna use that gold to produce onus. And we're gonna get upgrades. So we're getting wheelbarrow number two, <clears throat> which increases movement speed, carry capacity by three, and 25% gather it from berry bushes. We're going to get double broad exit a little bit. I'm going to speed up a, a tiny bit. Every time the farm comes again, make sure you put villager instantly. 
like that. And now their gathering speed is not that bad on the farms, by the way, because we have upgraded our Daimyo Manor. So yeah, with these guys, you're gonna go ahead and harass. Try not to lose them, okay? Try not to lose them. Next upgrade we're going for is double Brodax, another uh, barracks. You can see the three houses are right here. Farms keep spawning. So even though you're on one town center, your economy grows in a different way compared to the other sieves. So if you have two town centers, your economy grows by adding extra villagers uh, and having more of an economy. So obviously two town centers is better, but there is still value to this kind of uh, you know economy growth where you are getting farms for free from the landmark because you will have more food than your opponent. So let's assume that the game goes longer, let's say 20 minutes in feudal, your opponent will run out of food and needs to transition to farms, but there's a very, very high chance that you will still have deer or berry or boar on your side of the map or something like that, where um, you know, you're still going to be able to pump out units. How large is the area about around TC? This is the area. So quite large for the gathering. That's it's basically the same range as shooting range. So uh, it will cover Kura Storehouse if you put it one farm tile away or one farm away, it will cover all around it. So now the next farms I want to be placing is like this and then adding like here and so on. So we're going to keep making stuff to five barracks. Now, one very important thing, what makes Onas so good is actually their, the Japanese unique upgrade. They have four melee upgrades, one for each age. So Japanese can get uh, Tatara, which is age one blacksmith upgrade. So with plus one and plus two melee attack, because this unit has such a fast attack speed, you are increasing their DPS by crazy amounts. And last but not least, the reason why we got Daimyo Manor, so we can produce Katana Bannerman, which increases the damage off on us by another one. So once upgraded, they will have nine damage per hit and they will be hitting every 0.9 seconds which is really really good so here we go the bears are out now we're gonna go on to the sheep and remember keep adding villagers to your farms um i should get specialized pig um i add this is where i like to add two more workers on gold because i want to get uh second plus one attack i want to get iron under mash because the opponent will most likely go archers and i want to still add specialized pig and now that I'm picking up production, I'm gonna need more gold to produce Onas because they cost 20 gold. So, there's a specialized pick coming in as well. And now we have Bannerman, which now Onas do eight damage per hit. And I still don't have the last uh, melee upgrade that's gonna put that to nine damage per hit. So what is the plan right now? This is once you get your upgrades and once you get pl plus one armor and plus two melee we weapon damage, this is when you actually start being aggressive. Until now, you want to harass and you want to defend. You want to try not to lose any owners and you want to try not to lose any villagers. Uh, yeah, it adds damage to the villagers too. Uh, so your villagers with plus two will have eight damage. So what you're going to do now is next. Once you have five barracks, you're going to get all these upgrades in the order that I did them in. And then uh, maybe, by the way, if your opponent is like really aggressive, instead of getting specialized pick now, you can get iron undermash or plus two attack earlier. Um, what you're going to do now with food, you just keep rallying onto the sheep. You're going to keep putting workers on the farms. Uh, you know, nothing changes there. With the eight villagers on gold, once we have all the upgrades, we are going to transition to mass samurai, okay? Because you cannot go samurai from the start because they're very slow and they're actually not good early on. Samurais are not good if you have one or two. They're good if you have like 10 or 15 and you go under a town center because they have 3-3 three, three armor. So, and they have a deflective attack, right? But you don't want to open with samurai. So, with the extra wood, on the other hand, because we finished building the barracks, you're obviously going to produce houses. You're going to wall off your base fully, just to be sure you don't take any damage. And then you're going to leave the eight villagers on wood. And what you're going to do with that wood 
is every time you have a little bit of extra wood, you're just going to add farms. So right now I just had 150 wood. I'm going to make a wall here with the next 80, 90 wood. I'm going to make a wall here. And then every 80, 90 wood, I'm going to just take a villager from the sheep, add a farm, add a farm, and so on and so forth. So that I don't have to go out on the map because my farms are pretty good gathering speed. So why risk taking damage outside of the map? Now the, the advantage of Onas and having them in your army is that they are not only great combat units surprisingly, they're also really really strong harassment unit because they're so fast and they're cheap. If I send two Onas here to just harass my opponent's villagers and I kill one villager and then they die, they only cost 80 resources, that's it. So they're still good and you can send them around, which you will see in a second in a real game. From here on out, you want to be making mass samurai with Onas mixed in. Because Onas can attack over the samurais, because they have longer range. And with the plus two attack, if we look now, they do nine damage per hit with the bannerman, with the melee bannerman. And the bannerman does uh, 12. The Samurai, I don't know if I have a single one yet. Samurai have 3-3 three, three armor. My Undermash is about to finish. And 12 damage. When they get closer, I think they have uh, 13 or 14. So, um, it might not look strong, by the way. But let me show you in a real game and you'll see they destroy how much damage they do. From here on out, you're going to put, like I said, all the villagers on food. You're going to keep 8 on gold. And you want to basically keep spamming units while slowly gathering resources to eventually age up. And then you're going to upgrade your units, get the relics and all the good stuff. Regarding the age 3 landmark, you're going to go with landmark that spawns free relics under it. I'm not sure what it's called. Will it work against English? So this is the funny part. Remember how this thing says countered by archers, right? Well, let me show you a game where the opponent has archers and longbows. Floating gate, that's right. So initially I thought, well this gets countered by archers, right? And then, well, I had a lot of games where I just mow down archers. Somehow, I don't know how that works, but they actually destroy archers. If you have the numbers. So I'm going to speed up. Don't worry about the build order in this one. I, like I said, I was still trying to figure out the build. So the build is not the same as the last one. I just want to show you the battles and the fights, okay? That is that is the main thing. Oh yeah, I should use um, caster mode here. Now, he opened with horsemen, which is actually a great thing to show you, because I was mentioning earlier, if the opponent goes horsemen, uh, the Onas can actually deal with horsemen pretty well. I lose a villager here, kick W. Uh, they can deal with the horsemen pretty well, because they're pretty fast, and they actually trade better than the horsemen in one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, for its cost. So uh, Yeah, that's that's kind of how it goes. So if you're playing against just horsemen, you can just make honors Okay, you don't need to make spearmen only spearmen against knights If you look they deal quite a bit of damage and even when the horseman starts moving they still get a little clap in there So I'm gonna speed up Now I'm pumping more and more units adding more and more farms Getting the upgrades and now I can start being aggressive, right? Look at how much damage they do. Did you see that? That was four of them. They just ate through that scout. So now what am I trying to do? Uh, I've been scouting. I saw he has no second TC. I'm just going to try to get gold villagers, berry villagers. If he's on the outer food sources, I'm going to try to get that. And I get met with archers and soon longbows. So this is the beautiful part. Archers can't do shit to you. They can't do anything because the movement speed of an archer is 125 and these guys are bla blazing at 150. So if there's archers, just move away. That's it. You just run away. There's nothing you can do. You just move away. So here, he's still trying to harass over here. And now, once I'm set up, like earlier, in this game I went four barracks. You can see I'm slowly adding farms. Now, once I'm set up, I am going... Uh, by the way, this is bugged. It doesn't show wheelbarrow, but I have it. Wait, does it not show... It doesn't show uh, this either. I think the Japanese observer thing is bugged. So it doesn't... It shows like I have no upgrades. I'm about to get double broadaxe, but I already have the other ones. Anyway. Um, 
Now, once I have those things set up, like I said earlier, now I start spamming Samurai. So if you look, the army supply is pretty equal. He's actually killed two villagers, so he is ahead. And in theory, he is making correct units, which is Horseman Archer, because he's Byzantine, so he can't make knights, he can't make men at arms, so he has to make this, right? So... I harass here again. Obviously, I know archers are going to come, so I start running away. He kills one. I move away, and now I attack from the other side because, again, my units are way, way faster than his are. So what do I do? This is where the speed of Onas come, comes into play. So I'm going to take three, I'm going to put it on gold, and I'm going to connect my two armies. And all you got to do is when you fight, you just have to commit. So Ona's coming here, they're gonna start clapping the villagers, and look at the DPS. You see that? It's absolutely wild how much damage they do. So now, Samurai movement speed is, is 112. So what you want to do, the way you want to micro, you might think there's no micro, but there actually is. What you want to do is you want to... Um, Oh, the, the, the reason why army supply is like this, by the way, because I am pretty sure that the longbows are not counted because that is not 900 army supply or 900 uh, resource supply. I, I think that the mercenary unit might not be counting. What you want to do is you want to aim move your samurai. You don't need to micro them. Just let them tank the damage. And you want to select your Ona Bugacious and try to attack, attack move. And then move forward attack move move forward so that you use up your movement speed as much as possible to be on top of the enemy units so right here you will see the samurai array moved but what i'm doing with ona bugeshi is getting on top of the archers attacking moving attacking and you're just slicing them through and this is the best part i know what you're thinking now okay so what he's under his town center and now you got to go back well, because Samurais have 4 armor, I just dove under TC. Look at this. I killed 2 villagers. And now, this is what I was talking about. Look how far the Ona Bugeshas are attacking. These, this is my front line, which are the Samurai. What you can also do is select all of them, move them a bit back, and A move so that the Samurai go forward. And look at this now. His units are melting, and the samurai are tanking everything. I got more samurais coming in here. You still want to make onas, by the way. Mix in onas as well. Don't just make samurais at this point. And they are denting in everything. The, the samurai right now are like castle men at arms. They don't really take damage, if you look. So you want your samurai to tank, and you want your onas to just destroy everything. So 14 villagers killed. My bannerman did die, so I'm gonna replace it with a new one. But now, if you look, my income, my food income is 1,000. And you know what the best part about it is? Most of it is under my TC. If you have the map control, by the way, if you run out of sheep, you can go on the outer barriers or deer. Uh, but if you still have food, just stay under your TC. He's trying to kite, but his whole eco is idle. And even if he kills all of this, he has lost way way too many units and he taps out now i'm going to show you another game where i think he was playing french if i remember correctly because that is also an important one to show you guys uh don't worry the other losses are not for me playing japanese i played other civs do you keep your bannerman in your samurai control group yes just keep it in uh, uh samurai control group because otherwise it will slow down your onus and also samurai is pretty tanky by the way it also has 3-3 three, three armor so this is another game that I'm going to show you, and then we're done. And the reason I'm showing games, I don't usually show games, but I feel like if I just made the guide, nobody would believe me that those shit units can actually do anything. But once you get the upgrades for them, they do insane amounts of damage, as you just saw. So that's why I want to show you guys the game, so you can see, yes, it does work. So this is Jean d'Arc versus uh, the build that I was just doing. And Jean d'Arc is actually probably one of the hardest civs to play against uh, because it has not only knights, but it has a hero too. 
So I start off with really early walls on this side because they're quick walls so that I don't have to worry about knights coming from there and killing my villagers here. Um, so I only have to pay attention to this side and this side. Because it's a knight sieve, I do do a tower because uh, it's going to be a lot safer. Uh, knights can, you know, one clap you very, very quickly. So I didn't want to risk. So I'm putting a tower and uh, I have 37 stone right now. So if I mine a little bit of extra gold, I'm going to be able to upgrade that tower. I have Daimyo Manor already. And now um, you can see he's already trying to harass. And now I'm going to add spearmen like I mentioned earlier. Against Night Civ, you add spearmen. So I'm going to speed up. You can do some walls to help you a little bit like this. This is now a full wall. So he can't harass from that side anymore. And he is going to try to snipe this. And this is what I was talking about. Sometimes, depending on the spawn, Kura Storehouse can be pretty annoying. Because this villager, these two villagers are not protected. So if I put the Kura Storehouse like here but I had berries here so I couldn't but if I put core star hearts here that would be a lot better for me if my berries were there and then landmark here but it is what it is third barracks coming up my upgrades are coming again the upgrades are not showing but I do have them the tower kills a knight he's trying to harass not gonna work and now I have five spearmen and you can already see I'm adding on us. I'm already feeling pretty safe. I don't feel like I need to make 10 spearmen. Uh, sometimes when the opponent is like massing knights and they're not dying at all, I will, uh, you know, make um, maybe more spearmen. But in this one, I killed the knight and I damaged it quite heavily. So I was like, okay, I can transition now. I'm safe. I'm chilling. I'm getting plus one weapon damage. And we're moving on to the aggro part. And again, once I'm done with the barracks, um, or I have three right now, but I'm gonna add more. I just use this opportunity to wall this off because it's a night sieve. So this is what I wanted to show you. I scouted that he is on the board and I just sent two on us, right? One is probably too little. You can send three, but just sending two on us, even if I disrupt this gathering and I kill a villager and they both die, it's all good. So look at how fast they are. Look at how fast they are. So they start here, boom, boom. Look at that damage, look at that damage. That is time one speed. And they will catch up to the villager and kill it because villager movement speed is 129. So they can't actually, uh, once you start hitting, you will always kill a villager. So now I lose both Onas. I buy myself some time. He has some idle time. I'm fine with that. So what am I going to do? I'm going to send. I saw the deer on this side. I'm going to send two Onas over there. And then soon enough, I'm going to send more Onas on this side. And what I'm doing is, even though you're losing units and killing a villager and disrupting gathering time, I'm gathering the whole time. So I'm actually not like losing more units than he has because I'm actually producing more than he is. So I will still have more units. Now we got we got 12 spearmen, 13 spearmen, and once you play, and this is only against night sieves, if you play against a night sieve, I would suggest you to go samurai onas spearmen combo. Uh, I tried going only samurai and onas, and if the opponent realizes that you're doing that, they will just mass knights and they will murder you. So um, make sure to. Um, Make sure to add some Spearman too to make it a lot more complicated for the opponent because it's going to be a lot harder for them to micro. And uh, the best part about uh, Night Civ being aggressive with archers is if they go across the map and they overextend, aka you have more units than they do, you can catch up and they cannot outrun you. You will actually be able to kill all their units. So it is very risky to stay out like this on the map because you can lose your stuff very quickly. So another worker goes down and another worker goes down. And look, you can even do annoying stuff like split around like this and then shift Q them back into the same position. So look, I go into the stealth forest, I shift Q and I'm going to go back right there where we started. He tries to engage. And right now I have eight samurai, two onas, and even if he kites, I mean, you'll see how this battle goes. He does the big damage. He can't target fire. Like, there's way too many units. There's way too many spearmen. And he just gets mowed down. I put a couple of samurai on the hero. Because I don't want it to, like, keep 
into using the Q ability on my stuff. Ona came back in here, more idle time. Uh, there was another Ona over here. And he taps out. Now, I think that this... Initially, I thought it's kind of like a meme build. Like, oh, I caught someone off guard. But then I played against some people multiple times with this. Like, them knowing, like, okay. Because, you know, the first time when you play against this, you're like, okay, you know, I should have done that or this. But then I played against the same people multiple times. And I won all the games that I've played. The one game that I lost was against Jean d'Arc, where I stopped making Spearmen. I tried just pure Samurai and, and, and Onas against Knights. It did not end well. Um, but every other one, you can just you can just go Samurai Onas and blast them. I saw someone asking why was he across the map. Well, he's playing Jean d'Arc. He's supposed to be aggressive. So if he's aggressive and or, or if, he, if he's staying back, that's just gonna open him for harassment. Like, I'm just gonna go across the map, he's gonna have a hard time defending the boar and the deer, so him being out on the map makes it a bit easier for him to defend those things. And even if he wasn't pushing, I would have pushed in like a minute anyway with Mass Samurai, like I did in the game previously against Byzantines. So, yeah, it's pretty strong, it's pretty fun. I would advise you guys to check it out. I have tried to make some other comps with Japanese work, with like archers, I just really dislike their archers. Uh, I know they're a bit cheaper, I know they're a bit faster, and if you get an archer bannerman, they have same damage as the other archer, but I just feel like their setup for all that is a little bit too, too high. And Onas are perfect to spam early game because they're cheaper and Japanese eco super early is not that good. If you're watching on YouTube, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Check me out on Twitch, I'm probably live right now. Go out there, try this build, and in the future, the builds I'm going to show you for Japanese are most likely the hybrid Shinobi build, or uh, it will be a 2TC Japanese build. Twitch chat, let's keep going.